stay right there, church.
what an honor to be in your presence, Lord God. What an honor it is for me, for this house, to be under the covering of your presence. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, because your name is not only above every name, but Father, it is worthy of all of our praise, all of our adoration, all of our focus, all of our intent, Lord God. It all belongs so deservingly to you, Lord Jesus. What a gift it is to be before you. What a gift it is to be with you, to be through you, Lord God. That tonight as we gather, Father, may your grace rest upon us. May your loving kindness rest upon us. May your correction rest upon us, Father, as a reflection of your unending love for each and every one of us. Father, where we have fallen short, Lord, forgive us. Where we have fallen short, Father, forgive us. Cleanse us, Lord, purify us, make us more like you. Give us the image of Christ. Let it be so permeating through in us that, Lord, everyone who comes in contact with us has had an encounter with you alone. Lord, tonight may every heart in this place be surrendered to your spirit. That, Lord, those things that have bound us, that have kept us, that have weighed heavy upon us, Father, that in the midst of your presence, every burden is lifted. Every burden is lifted, Father. Every heaviness of heart, every place where it looked like there was no way, Father, may you make yourself known tonight like never before. May the transforming power of your spirit make itself known amongst us like never before. Father, you, we are so undeserving, but you have called us worthy of your love. May we never forget the price that you paid in order that our lives may see abundance in every area, Father, in health, in wealth, in all that has to do with us, Father. From tonight, give us a transformed mind, a renewed heart, a right spirit before you, Lord God, so that all that you have called for us to lay hold of, Father, let it not be hindered any longer from today. May it not find any dominion or power above you from today. Lord, let us come into alignment with where you have seated us so that all that is to do with us is a pure reflection of where you have placed us in you, in Jesus' mighty and matchless and powerful and perfect name. And the church says, and the church says, and the church says, amen. If you believe that today, I need you to rejoice with your amen. I need your praise to rise again. Some of you may have forgotten where God placed you, where God called you, where he has always kept you. But from today, in the name of Jesus, let your praise rise again. Let your praise rise again. your voices and just rejoice for a moment. You, Lift Jesus. up your voices and just thank him thank for a moment. Jesus. You are not just a daughter of revelation. You are a daughter of the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's an unction of the power the Holy Spirit in this house tonight and we won't leave until every woman gets a piece of what God came to give you this is not a house of mourning it is a house of rejoicing I don't care what life brought in front of you you have been seated where no harm can touch you that you have been called before anything showed up, an overcomer and a victor because of who 
you belong to. A new hope rises inside. A restored joy rises inside. Because your eyes are finally and perfectly set where they belong. Hallelujah. 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 Are y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Daughters of Revelation. Welcome to Daughters of Revelation. We missed y'all last week, but I'm glad we um, are wise enough to just say the safety of the people here is more important and we can make another time for us to be together. And tonight is our time. Amen. 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 Whose first time is it here tonight? First time. Raise your hands high. Whose first time is it in Revelation Church? Raise your hands high. Welcome them. Greet them. Love on them. God bless you. God bless you. May the Lord richly reward you for your time in his presence tonight. Hallelujah. And for those that are watching online, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Which camera am I looking at? Hi. For those watching online, we love you. We appreciate you. And may the Lord richly bless you tonight. That there be no distance in the spirit. That there is nothing in your world that the Lord himself has not made himself sufficient enough for. That you don't just walk through. You get over you overcome, you're victorious, and you can lead those that are surrounded and connected to you through that same victory that God has now given you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, if you're new here, we have a little custom that we do, have a little fun here at Revelation Church, Daughters of Revelation. I want you to turn to your sister beside you. Look them straight in the face. Don't get scary now. Straight in the face. Tell her, honey, you look good. You look good. But you don't look better than me. But you don't look better than me. Hallelujah. 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 Well, let's get into it, shall we? Amen. Y'all ready for the word of God tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you to lift your right hand up to heaven. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Give me the spirit of revelation. Give me the spirit, spirit of, of revelation. revelation. Give me a heart that is good ground to receive. Give me a heart that is good ground to receive. And anything that has kept me. And anything that has kept me. From today. From today. Let it have no hold over me. Let it have no hold. Over, me. over receiving your love over receiving your love over receiving your spirit over receiving your spirit over receiving even your correction over receiving even your correction that from today that from today the old is gone the old is gone and the new has come and the new has come. in Jesus mighty name, Jesus mighty name. hallelujah Clap for the amazing worship team. That was phenomenal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say beyond the curse. Beyond the curse. Y'all ready for that? Yes. Beyond the curse. Beyond the curse. Amen. One of the first things that we have to realize is that us as children, as believers of God, we failed in a particular area. And why I say that we have failed is because we have put our focus on that which God has come to redeem us from. We are children of the promise, yet we live as though we are victims of the curse. And we don't realize we're doing it until the fruits of your life are not producing at the level in which God has called you to live. The promise and the blessing of God is not something that we strive for. It's not something we hope to attain. It is the standard set by God in which every believer should be living. So then it becomes very easy for us to take spiritual inventory of where our lives are sitting. Yes. Is my life producing the promise or is it producing the curse? It, 
But because from the fall of Adam and Eve, all we know is that man ate of the tree in which God told him not to, we focus very easily on where Genesis was. But that Christ said, I came from the foundations of the earth. He was died, crucified, resurrected. Meaning he took into account every single thing that we would face on this side of eternity so that we do not have to succumb to the circumstance. We don't have to succumb to the consequence. So when we talk about living beyond the curse, we're coming back to the foundation of the blessing of God. We're coming back to the foundation of the promise of God, which didn't remove itself because Adam and Eve chose not to obey. But the crazy thing about the curse is it didn't even start with the man. It didn't start with the woman. It began, it began when Satan decided that he was higher, that he wanted to be like. When pride entered in, and from heaven he fell with all of his angels, that is where the curse began. But a person doesn't get cursed, the destiny does. And Satan is the first example of that. He was damned to an eternity apart from God. So when Satan was given rulership or the ability to deceive those that are on the earth, as the Bible says, he that deceiveth the whole earth, when he was given that access, his entire goal became, who can I take with me beyond the curse and you daughter of God are not even a part of it your life your destiny everything that has to do with you should never be associated labeled put together with anything to do with that which God has redeemed you from Beyond the curse. So turn in your Bibles quickly so I can let y'all sit down. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. When y'all are there, shout amen. Amen. When y'all are all there, shout amen. Amen. Who's going to read it for me? Can we read it together? Yes. Amen. Genesis 3, from 13 to 17. 1, 2, 3. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go. And thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Stop right there. Stop right there. When the Lord was cursing anything or anyone, verse 14 tells us he cursed the serpent. He cursed the serpent, saying, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, meaning you have deceived another one, the first one, thou art cursed above all cattle. And he came in the, in the form of a serpent. Okay, he's cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and the dust of thou eat all the days of thy life. Continue, verse 15. And, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Before I let y'all sit down, what did he curse to Adam? Did he curse Adam? 
He cursed the ground because of Adam. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we note that. You may sit in heavenly places. Amen. 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 It's very important before we get into the scripture that we understand that there are three states of a man. There's three states of the human life. There's a state of those that are not with God. So then doesn't mean necessarily that things in their life are bad. They might even be succeeding, but they are without God. That being said, that leaves them under no covering. So even though you might achieve success, even though things may be going well, you are susceptible to the attack of the enemy. Everything that you do can crumble and fall at any given moment because you have no covering. Okay, let's talk about that. Just anybody in the world could be that, right? Your most successful person without God is susceptible to everything going down, most importantly, their own soul. Then you have those that are under the curse. And what does that mean? Those are people that nothing in your life works out. You may have God. You may love God. Nothing in your life works out. Nothing ever amounts to anything. All that you do, toil, labor, you can't get anywhere. Your money never goes anywhere. Relationships never work out. Kids aren't listening. Everything about you finds its way in trouble with no seeming way out. And then you have the one that is with the blessing of God. Now watch this. With somebody that is under the curse, a blessing can try to come. It'll never be able to stand. So you might get blessed and then things get swooped from under you. The one that's under the blessing, a curse might be able to come, try and come, but it'll never be able to stand. Meaning you've been shifted, not only because you have God, but because you've been granted the blessing of God and you live according to that blessing. When you have the Lord and his blessing, all those things in your life that will be attacked, I'm not saying may, all those things that will inevitably be attacked can never be overcome. Amen. That blessing is your protection, your guardianship, ensures that no matter what, it must first go through him. And if it has first gone through him, it cannot be overcome. There is no victory that can come over that which God has put his hand on. So let darkness come, let any trial come. You are kept, your life is kept, your family is kept, your children are kept, the blessing of God is kept, your destiny is kept. Amen. So when we come to Genesis, we understand that the curse began with the enemy. And when he fell, his whole entire destiny was now decided. No way out. So if the flame and the pit and the fire furnaces of hell are now allowed only for him and his angels. His desire is that he fills it with as many other people that he can. So when he came to Adam and Eve, they were under the blessing of God. God had given them a mandate, be fruitful and multiply. In that place, they knew they were with God. The minute that they came into agreement with the instruction of the enemy, the only thing that they were left to do was they procreated. But everything about them now became trouble. So he said, the serpent is cursed. You already have been cursed. He represented Satan, the one that already had a destiny, and now you tried the one whom God loves. When he came to Adam and Eve, which this becomes very pertinent, I guess, even for a woman, he told Eve that in your labor, you'll have pains. You'll have serious pains. He told her that. Let's read it real quick. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Meaning the blessing that is a child now is being brought forth in sorrow. How many women do we know still live by that same curse. And the problem is, is that we have normalized the curse and not the promise. We have accepted the curse over the blessing. 
How do we know that? And it's amazing because I love the story. I believe it was um, Jamie was the first one that ever um, uh, brought, for, brought around the book Supernatural Birth. And I was amazed at Jamie because you can, I mean, you could say it. Do you have a mic? Your first baby yeah. came how? In pain. And your second and third baby came how? Pain free. How did you do that? By connecting my mind to the promise and not to the curse. Anyone who has born children or wants to bear children, I highly recommend that book. Why? Because it eliminates from the mind of the child of God that which you don't have to succumb to. Not because she made something up and you know, you just believe it. It's because she pointed the curse back to the blessing and said, this is what God made provision for. Even when the world tells you, this is how it goes. So now there's women all over the world, which Jamie's story now looks like an exception when it should be the norm. And that's what the enemy tries to do is he tries to make the promise an exception and not the norm. For the child of God, he tries to make the blessing an exception, a high reach. Maybe you'll get it, maybe you won't, but likely you will not because you have believed the normalcy of the curse. But when it comes to faith, it comes against every single thing that your physical sense can see. Because when Adam, when the ground was cursed, it did not say Adam was cursed. Mm -hmm. It means everything that would be around you, now you have to toil and trouble for simply because you disobeyed. And that is the definition of a curse. Because the truth is the enemy cannot curse you. But because we believe God is only good, and God is only good in this way, that we don't believe his justice and his goodness also prevails in disobedience. Because curse comes when you have disobeyed God. And the only one who can allow a curse to stand is God himself. The devil didn't come and put a curse on Adam and Eve. He deceived them enough to walk into it. Because he knew where his life would end. He said, I got to take enough with me. Who's it going to start with? And Jesus, uh, God cursed Adam because he said, you listen to your wife, number one, when I gave you instruction. And then you took of the tree I told you not to. You allowed this curse. Because God can't, he can't defend us in disobedience. But then we want to call God merciless or unfaithful. When the only time that the hand of God can come off of a curse is if he himself shows himself merciful. God in his mercy, God in his love, in spite of. But the Bible says that God came to redeem us from the curse of the law. But some of us yet still are living according to that curse. Imagine if, I, if you, everybody in this room, if I asked you, you're going to have a, child, a pain-free childbirth. Would you believe it? I don't believe you. Because nothing around you has told you otherwise. And because we become a believer that lives by sight and not by faith, then the impossible is truly impossible because we don't believe God to be greater than the impossible. We suffer where we shouldn't. We travail in toil where we shouldn't. Simply because we do not take God faithful to the promise that he spoke greater than any curse. Mm. To the toil and trial that he spoke greater. That he promised that the sufficiency of myself is greater than anything that you would face or have to overcome. But because you've lived apart from me, Meaning that you've become the first state of the man. You don't even know it. Mm. That you've decided that you can live, and if you find any form of success, that God is pleased. That if you find any form of accomplishment, that God is with you. Until a trouble or trial comes that overtakes you, and then you think, God, where are you? No, where are you? Are you found in the place of the promise or are you found in the uncovering of it in the place of the curse? 
Because get this, when he cursed the ground, that means that where he was was not a place that was covered any longer. Come on! When he cursed the ground, he made it very clear that yeah, you'll be able to produce, but you can't live in the blessing of God any longer. Adam and Eve still could produce, but they couldn't fulfill the blessing. When God said, be fruitful and multiply, he released the mandate. But it didn't mean that they were given access immediately. There was an accomp you had to, there was an obedience required in order for them to walk in to the blessing. That God speaks such great things over each and every one of us. Why are we not seeing it? But God, everybody in my family, nobody gets anywhere. You are not cursed. What surrounds you and what follows you is. And that's a very harsh reality because a lot of us have spent time travailing thinking, God, why am, what's wrong with me? Yeah. Why nobody in my family, nobody gets married or nobody ever gets anywhere or everybody's always poor mm. or we work so hard and nothing ever comes out of this life. It's easy to think you are cursed. But no, you have to be uprooted from the ground Come that is on. cursed. You are teaching. That's so good. Cursed is the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when so he good. told him, he gave him all of these things to do. Adam was given all of these things. You have the birds of the field, birds of the air, and the beasts of the field, and everything that has to do, you have dominion over it. Mm. He was given that. Mm -hmm. meaning that was his assignment go fulfill it but when you walk in disobedience to that which God has called you to do you remove yourself from under the covering of the blessing yeah under the access of the blessing and you walk into that which you for generations people travail to get through A reality that needs redemption from today. That God, you did separate me and you did make me different from everybody else. But without the revelation, the curse will still have cause to stand. Because the Bible says, a curse without a cause cannot stand. And if we know that it is God that allows the curse, what is keeping the curse here? What is keeping me under the curse? Not because Jesus didn't redeem us from the curse of the law. Not because he didn't make himself available. But as we dive in tonight, that you will realize that it's a very simple thing that we are failing to do as children of God that will cause everything that was stagnant to move in motion. Amen. Those things that were upheld from generation to generation now find their headway forward because of you. You can't change what you don't know. And just because you know you have to have power to overcome. But it's what you live by that determines what you can overcome and what your family could never. So let's get into it. He said, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. He goes on to say, Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it waste thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto the dust shalt thou return. He didn't tell Adam nothing's going to come out of you but you're gonna to have to toil to get it. You're gonna have trouble to get it. Disobedience gave him access and ability to toil. Do you think it was God's plan that when he gave Adam and Eve all of this to look over, all of this to accomplish, that he said, I, it's gonna come with its trouble though? No. Disobedience Open the gate for toil and trouble to come, to fight the blessing of God to come to pass. So then you look at your life and you say, well, Lord, 
I know I didn't hear you right, or I know I didn't obey you in that place. How do I redeem myself? How do I come back from that? The first step is the recognition. The second step is the reliance that needs to come with him. That, Lord, I haven't been able to get this to become. To move under the curse and into the blessing, ye must become. Let's keep going. Turn in your Bibles quickly to John 1, verse 12. John 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. To become. What have you become? The curse will cause you to become like everybody that came before you. The curse will cause you to emulate and mirror every limitation that you've ever been shown. Become. You're going to become. But what are you becoming? That's the focus of the child of God that is missing because it's not because Jesus didn't make himself available. When he redeemed us through his death, life, and resurrection, he gave us the power to become. And to become a son of God is not just in its name, not just in its fame but in the character of that which we are, that you are no longer recognizable as the one who has been cursed, but you are recognized as the one whom God has blessed and the blessing must come through. Who have you become? And the problem with that first category of men is that they become. What is your focus in become? You want to become rich? Or I want to become well? Or I want to become successful? Or I want to, all the things that you deem are good, that God wants for you, but they don't start because you pursue a thing that is of him. They start because you pursue him that holds it. So now my character becomes. I become. My pursuit is, is that I followed that which I desire to become. Gave he power to become. How can we be cursed and children of God? You can be under a curse and still a child of God. How is that possible? You become so perplexed that generation after generation, nobody gets any further than this. That now I'm just a product of the environment that has been cursed. Because what he told Adam is that the things around you are cursed. Okay, now everybody born into those things around them is also a product of the limitations of that curse. So because the ground was cursed, your job is to now find your uproot into the blessing of God where no curse can stand, where no sickness can... There's people. No sickness can touch them. No poverty can touch them. No limitation can keep them. No bad word, no encouragement, no, no pursuit of any evil can touch them. Why? And it's amazing because in that book, that Supernatural Birth, it talks about how she has testimonies of so many women that she imparted the same revelation into that have the same testimony in their childbirth. So it's not just lucky you. It's who takes hold of the truth that is given in the word of God and allows it to transform them Amen. to become. Amen. So now you and we as women with the ability to rebirth, to ability to create and give birth to someone in the earth, how does that blessing come forth? Because some of us are okay with the blessing coming forth with suffering. Some of us are okay with the blessing coming forth because somebody had to work hard enough to get where they need to be. The blessing will prove that not accomplishment, no accolade, no accreditation, no approval of man will ever be enough for a blessing to stand on that ground. It's sinking sand. Where your foundation is, that where is with the strength of your root. Apart from that, you might see somebody that is wildly successful, and in a moment's notice, it gets taken from them. 
That is always evidence. It's not because, oh, God was with them and all of a sudden he's none. How tall your tree can grow, when that wind comes, will show where it was first built. We are so enamored by people that I want to be just like them. You don't know where their foundation is. Our aspiration cannot be found that this person carries the life that I want, but that this person emulates the image of Christ that I need. <laughs> Apart from that, you might, fall sm you might find small successes along the way, only to find that when that wind blows, because it will, and when that storm rages, because it will, where is your foundation found? The Bible talks about the parable of where the seed falls, rocky soil, can't grow there, it's quenched here, or it can fall on good soil. Good soil is the ground of the promise of God. But in order for that ground to become, it must be tilled, and tilling is painful. Tilling is painful because it weeds out those things which you thought were covered up or dug down deep enough that you could hide. And God says, I need to roll back, 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 back. Because it followed you and you didn't even know it did. And in order for what I have to, for you to stay with you and affect all those around you, I need to uproot some things. But because we try to conceal an image, a form of godliness delying the power that of, trying to appear as righteous and as holy, then we allow the image of God to only have a surface view. Because when somebody looks at you, they cannot see Maggie. Oh no, they can't look at me and see Maggie. If they see Maggie, it means I've yet to let the image of God make itself known through me. If somebody can say, you don't want to mess with her like that because she still got the street inside. Oh God, I surrender. What have you surrendered? If it is still difficult for the process of God to have its way in you, you have not yet surrendered. Because the process of God will bear an image of him that no other way could have come. But because that image bearing process is very difficult for many of us, we would rather have the surface depiction of godliness no power, but people are inspired around you, motivated around you, and nothing about them changed because nothing about you has changed. Gave ye power to become. What are you desiring to become? A curse without a cause can't stand. Okay, well, a witch has attacked me. Possible, very, very possible. And many people have succumbed to the power of witchcraft. But it's not because God didn't cover you. It's because you put yourself in a place where God could not cover you. It's not because God wasn't with you. It's not that God is not more powerful. But what we allow access to us gives the enemy ability to touch us. A harsh reality many of us don't want to believe because you just want deliverance from it. But you don't want to change any way about you that kept you from going back to it. An alcoholic can come and say, I don't want to drink alcohol anymore. Deliver me from that. And God will do it. Oh, 100%. Nothing is too great for him. Nothing is too small for him. So somebody comes and the spirit of alcohol is lifted. They go back home house full of it. It's okay, I'm not going to touch it. Or they go back to being around people that they're not strong enough to resist. Okay, so the environment. That's the thing. Even when God delivers the person, if the environment around them is still under a curse and you have not come under the blessing and you think that you have overcome the curse, it's only a matter of time until you find yourself in a worse situation than you were before. The Bible talks about when a house is cleaned, spirit leaves, comes back, the house is still clean. 
To some, the clean, cleanliness was enough. No, that's not what the Holy Spirit comes to do. He comes to deliver you and then fill you. So the house can't just be cleaned. It also needs to be filled because what happens? That same spirit brings seven of its other homies and says, let's go. The house is empty. We've got free reign. So now the alcoholic goes and they come back and they're worse than they were before. They need deliverance again. God can't do it. Oh, yes, he can. And in his mercy, he will. But the basis of deliverance is a life transformed. So just because the spirit left you, what did you do when you went back to the place where the environment also had to shift in order for you to overcome as God called you to? God, I'm your child. I'm still struggling with that. There's a difference between a weakness and sin. God allows weakness. God prohibits sin. So what you have called weakness, God has called sin. So now you live outside of the covering of God, still find yourself under a curse and wonder why God hasn't helped you. Wonder why nothing in your life is moving forward. God's not unfaithful to you, church. God is coming so that you can become something else than you've already known. He can become something different than all you've ever shown. He is waiting for you to get so desperate in your unbecoming. God, make me so desperate to not be anymore. All that I've been shown, everything that everyone else before me walked through, make me desperate enough to unbecome so that your promise can rest on me, not visit me. I don't want the blessing of God to visit my kids. I don't want the blessing of God to visit my health. I want the blessing of God to rest upon me. But I cannot look for the blessing outside of the spirit. So if my pursuit is that blessing apart from the spirit, you'll have a gift that won't be taken but won't operate with him. Gifts of God are without repentance, aren't they? It's not enough for God just to bless me. It's not enough for things just to work out around me. The only thing that I will accept is when that blessing comes, it never leaves my side. It never leaves my family. It never leaves those that are connected to me. It never leaves those that God has assigned for me to touch and for it to affect. The blessing outlasts situation and outlasts generation. That without the hand of God upon you in the place where you have brought, been brought up from under the curse and into the blessing. Because the thing is, is the thing that we decide that a part of him is enough or a piece of him is enough. That God, I've allowed you to permeate in the place that was really hard for me. Good for you. Honestly, good for you process of God and the plan of God has its way but God I, I've and me standing where I am before you today had to make that decision a long time ago if I'd be of any effect to the kingdom of God there's not one way about me anymore that I said I'm not changing that not one place I don't care how good I think it is If he deems that good as a hindrance to what he has called to be great, what he has called to be so, and I refuse to let go of it, and then I want to be effective before his people. No, I'm not calling on a God in public that I haven't let process me in private. The man that you see minister before you each and every week or the ministers that have come and are on the stage with effect and power. You are seeing the effects of the promise that has first made its way into the inward man. I can't give you a reflection of what is not first inside. The adorning came from inside. The adorning of my inward man had its process in me. Am I perfect? No, I'm not. And that's why you'll have people that are obedient to God but aren't transformed by him. A servant can obey his master and not love him. 
That's why we're not just servants, we're child. That he's not just my Lord, he's my father. And because we have only made him one thing and produced nothing else but from that one thing. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to be honest with each and every one of you. If you ever approach a man or woman of God and call them by their name, you're just calling by the human. You want the man. But you, if, if you expect from them that which can only come from God, then you must recognize where God remains inside. Yeah. I'm not going to Benny and saying, hey, Benny. No. And want God from her? Not possible. Not possible. Because God has processed himself in her inward man so that her spirit can be effect when she comes into contact with anybody God sends her way. But if he can't see her, if they cannot see her for who he is inside of her, don't you dare call on a God you don't want to recognize, you don't want to honor. That's why if you want the homie, number one, I don't want any new friends. No, I'm done with that. But if you want from me that which only God can give you, then you must be able to honor the process of God that has made its way inside of that man. Don't you ever call Brother Lovey and expect the prophet to come out. There was a process in his inward man that you could never take away, but you have the ability or inability to access. Not because he's not here for you. Not because God didn't send him, but because you could not receive him. If they do not receive you, take your gift with you and leave. The Bible says that. So I pity the person that cannot see God wherever he makes himself known. And that doesn't mean they need a prophet or, a, or an evangelist or teacher or a pastor or an apostle in front of their name. That's not what I'm saying. When the inward man is the leading of your life, then the spirit will always recognize spirit. So if God wants to make himself known through the donkey, you'll be able to recognize God through the donkey. But is that an image you're willing to bear? Is that an image you're willing to accept? I'll never forget, I used to, um, I'm one of those people, I can talk to absolutely anybody. And I had a very big heart for homeless people, have, not had. But at this particular moment, it was, I was in Boise, and there was a guy that was an alcoholic. And my, my desire, I just wanted to love on him. A lot of people like that can feel very forgotten. And I just wanted to love on him. And I remember going to him and, and asking him how he's doing. And he told me I've been an alcoholic for, since I was 14 years old. The guy's over 50 easily. And I remember thinking, like, God, what do you want me to say to him? Like, what do you have for him? And in that moment, God opened my eyes so clearly. And he said, I have something to say to you. And he used that drunk alcoholic. He used the one that looks like he's, his whole life is cursed. He used the one that I could have easily overlooked. I could have easily ignored. And gave him a word for me that I still stand on today. But it wasn't because this person was looking after God or in his word and still drinking alcohol, even though we find a lot of those people too. But it was somebody that if you did not have the eye of the spirit man, if you did not operate from the eye of the spirit man, that you would overlook that which God has came to give you in a moment which could have easily passed you by. Yeah. Honor, look, make it your desire to honor the inward man of every person you come in contact with. Because if you can honor the inward man, meaning man looks at the exterior, God looks at the heart. God, but they don't have a good heart. That's not what he's talking about. Make it your desire to seek the face of God in whatever image he places before you, whether it's the wind that you can't see, but you can feel, whether it's the person that's on your last nerve, whether it's that in-law that you can't have anything but problems with. When you look for the face of God in every area of your life, he will make himself known. But it is only to the one that has sacrificed his place 
of God, I think this is what I know, or this is what I understand, or this is what I accept. But Lord, it means nothing. If you have something to say, if you have a message to relay, dare I be the one to come against you. Because we prolong the places of our suffering and our toil, and even the land of the curse that we desire to come out of, simply because you can't recognize the answer that God sent to you. God, I can't even see you in that place because it doesn't look like you. I can't even honor you in that person because I know what they've done. Yet some of the most anointed people are the most tarnished. That's why you have people that can come into a church, find out the man of God or woman of God did something they didn't like, and they're out. Why? Because they haven't allowed God to have the process in them. Just because God gives you a stage doesn't mean he's displaced you from all the things that a man would face because Jesus said that he had to become everything to all those around him. Paul had to become all things to all men so that by some mean he could save some. And Jesus bore every sin, every infirmity, every iniquity. Even Jesus had to live under the curse in order for him to die to a destiny that would allow us to come under the blessing. Jesus, who did no wrong to no man, had to come into this earth to see the curse, to be in the curse, so that he could show you I've overcome it. Not so that we could continue to live as the one born of Adam and Eve, but that you could desire and require that your life come into alignment as the one who has been called and blessed. The blessing that can't be revoked, taken from you, conditional approval, but well, Lord, I keep myself in the place of your process so that everything that you send to me, I have room enough to receive it. You don't want to reach the storehouse of heaven and there's so many things that you never laid hold of. But the place of the curse has its fruit and the place of the blessing has its fruit. If every time life happens to you, you can't think of anything but the worst that can come out of it, you're not in the place of the blessing. The blessing overrides its environment, and the curse lives according to it. The blessing overrides its environment, and the curse lives according to it. Meaning one is susceptible, and one is a non-negotiable. One is conditional, and one is irregardless of. From which place are you willing to live? Let's keep going. Galatians uh, 3, verses 13 to 14. Is this making sense? Y'all yeah. getting somewhere? Yeah. Galatians uh, 3, verses 13 through uh, 15. Christ hath redeemed us. Christ, meaning Jesus who came into this earth. We're not talking about the Holy Spirit. We're not talking about the Godhead. We're talking about Christ. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I'm going to read that again. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. God knew what he was sending his son to get into. He didn't run from it. Even though it was painful, he didn't run from it. He became it. A part of the becoming is not running from the process of God even when it hurts. Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Every depiction of that moment for Jesus was nothing but torture. He allowed the environment to torture him. He allowed all those around him to torture him. Knowing exactly, he said, not my will, but yours be done. But please, Lord, let this cup pass from me. He would like for it to have moved past. Lord, I know what you came. I know what I'm here for. But right now in this moment, when you hit the thick of it, 
which is the very point in which everything in you is tried and tested. Are you operating by the strength of yourself or are you operating by the strength of the spirit of God within you? When it comes to the thick of the trial, that is the breaking point of your becoming. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare turn away because that is the very moment in which God will prove himself faithful for you. That is the very moment when the strength that you know you didn't have anymore, God shows you, now I'm ready to give you what I have for you. Now you're able to rely on your spirit within me. Now you're able to rely on the spirit within you. When you have come to your end, God has just begun. But when you have come to your end is the turning point of all that you have known yourself to be. God knows a version of you that you haven't even come in contact with. Not because he's not ready to get you there, but he knows what it'll take to get you there. So what you think, God, I'm suffering this curse. No, it's not the curse. It's the process of God. If I have made myself not only surrendered, not only obedient, but allowed God to transform the way that I think, the way that I process life, the way that I see things that are happening around me, if I've allowed that, then everything that comes to me, God, is just your process. I'm not mad at you because you gave me a process. If Jesus had not become the curse, he could not become the life. And if he could not become the life, then we would not be able to travail, overcome, and be victorious over everything we would see today. Those three years that carried so much for him, many of us would rather be dead or would die. The curse will take you to the point of death. Death of you, death of your destiny, death of the promise of God. But the process of God will take you to the end of yourself with the promise for the sufficiency of himself to take over. So now God, when the process comes, I'm not running away anymore because you showed me that when you became the curse for me, I become the overcomer because of it. We are living in the promise of God, in the bared fruit of God. When he came and became Jesus on this earth, we now have access to everything that would allow us to overcome anything beneath us. But because you have not made the earth your footstool, you've made yourself like the serpent who runs across it. Dust he came from, he'd eat it, he'd come under it, he'd be sent below it. We are living at levels lower than the blessing of God, still wondering why things are not changing for those around us, for even our own lives, for the promise that he'd given. Why can't, why can't I attain it, Lord? You can't live beneath a standard and still want what comes with the reward. The blessing is a standard. The promise is a standard. But because the curse is also an option to many of us, not because God wants that for you, but that you've chosen apart from him. You're good. You're, even when he was saying that, so many were doing all of these things in my name, and he said, get away from me. I didn't know you. Or when, there were, when I was poor, you didn't feed me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I needed, you didn't provide for me. Get away from me. But God, what are you talking about? Prophet Lovey talked about that the other day. That you can't do apart from him and ask him to reward it. That you can't just say, I think I know the mind of God. Those that you see prospering in good health, everything that they put their hand to prevails. Those are not people that are guessing where God is. Those are people that know the mind of God by the spirit of God within them. So that they know wherever their feet tread, they have possessed that land. Our lives are a living testimony to that. That's why I'm on full blast when it comes to the things that we experience. Nobody can ever tell us otherwise because I know what it is to be in lack. I know what it is to be without. I know what it is to be struggling and not knowing where the next thing. Don't tell me I don't know. Y'all see the product of obedience. Y'all see the product of living under the blessing and covering of God. That is all available to you at the level of the uniqueness to which God has called you. Can you access that which has been promised you? The blessing requires access. But what gives us access? It's your becoming. 
It's not to look on the life of another person and think you need to emulate the steps that they've taken. It's that in the obedience of the secret place where God has spoken to you and you alone, that in spite of God, I'll still obey. I'll still believe. And then you reap the product of that belief. You reap the product of that faith. Your life will show fruit of that. So where our life feels stagnant, we can analyze ourselves and say, am I under the place of the blessing or have I found myself in the land of the cursed? You are not cursed. Your family is not cursed. God does not curse people, but he makes everything around them very difficult for them to overcome because they're not living from the place of his spirit, the place of overcome, the place of victory. And we decide, are you ha have you had enough? Have you had enough of the way things have always been for you to decide another way must be made for you? That I don't just want God as my way maker and my miracle worker and these beautiful things that we sing. That I want to have the image of the heart of Christ. I want to be a bearer of the image of Christ. Because sickness can't touch Jesus. And curse cannot touch Jesus. And poverty can't touch Jesus. Why can it touch you? We're almost finished. I'm almost done with y'all. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of God, to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. From today, you need to believe you're the firstborn of the brethren of God. You are the firstborn. If you are the first one to bear the image of God in your generation, in your family, praise God that it has begun with you. Praise God that from today, nothing about you will be recognizable to those around you. I am an image bearer of the firstborn of the Son of God. If no one around me has seen it from today, you'll be able to see it because of me. So now the same calamity that hits everybody else can't stay like it stayed with everybody else. It's met an overcomer. It's met those that are victorious, not because you changed, but because your image did. And not because it became people that say, be the best friend of yourself, that is garbage. Salvation didn't come to make you just saved and go to heaven. Salvation didn't come so that you can have the best version of you. Salvation came so that you could be an image of Christ Jesus on the earth. So now it's not just enough to know that you're saved. True salvation made you a new creation. And not a new creation so people can recognize Esther in the room or Lolita in the room. They see a bunch of Jesuses walking all over the earth. Salvation came to make you more like him. Who have you become? Who have you become? I don't care how many successes or failures you've had in this life. If the world, if Christ himself, if his spirit cannot see Jesus, you will have a very short-lived success in any area that you prevail in. Amen. Why? Because when the curse comes, it has its effects, its long-standing effects. And some people may be able to alleviate the effects of it or hide it or conceal it or weaken it. But as long as it has a presence, it will always carry a power. The same can be said about the blessing. The blessing can't be faked. You know people that act like they've got it, but they don't. People that act like they've got it together, but they don't. God didn't come to make me a better version of me. He came to make me the only version of Christ. Because when his hand rests on something, it must rest on himself. And because you are kept in the hand of God, no one can snatch you out. So anytime trouble comes looking, it looks for him first. 
Any time that trouble comes following you when you become the image bearer, just know that he is the one that has made the trouble come. God has allowed that thing to come so you can show everyone around you, greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. I'm not looking for a perfect life. I know a victorious one. And when God opens Prophet Lovi and I to speak of the testimonies that we have prevailed over, that we have been victorious over, you will hit your head a million times. You will fall. Get this. Okay, let's talk about it. No, we're not talking about me real quick, but I'm going to bring up something that just came to me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When Jesus found Peter, a fisherman, he toiled and toiled and toiled all night. This is a professional. He knew exactly what he was doing, could catch no fish. Why? Because the ground of Adam was still found in him, right? You have to believe that. Anywhere the imprint of Adam, which is the imprint of the curse that everything around you must come with toil and trouble, he was the professional, meaning he had every skill and ability to do so, and he couldn't catch not thy fish. What do you look like being the best at what you do and nothing comes out of you? Okay, pause. Jesus comes on the scene. He goes, come on, Peter. It's the wrong time of day. Jesus is not a fisherman. And he tells them, come with me. They go, they throw the net out. This guy gets the biggest lot of his life. When you follow the pattern of the curse, you reap only what the curse has been limited to, right? So even if you get one good day, which is what the world has led us to believe, you're not always going to win. The devil is a liar. So maybe your one good day or your one bad day, you know, we got to count our L's and our dubs, right? Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. So he not only gave him a physical attribute to look at, he said the whole trajectory of who you are is being changed simply because you decided, I'm not gonna follow what I understood before. I'm not gonna look at what was successful for me before, but I'll lay it all down and follow one that I've never known before, who has promised that he cannot fail. Because what does Jesus look like coming in and saying, I got this? When Jesus sends somebody to you, no, you're crazy. That's not how this works. And I've caught myself in the same place thinking that I know better than that which God has instructed me through a person that I could not receive. And you pay the price for that. Delay, closed doors, denial, rejection limitation. Everything you're trying to run from is, has its hold on you. It's like being tied to something and you can still move, but you don't know what it's like to be free. But if you knew what it was like to be free, you'd realize I've been running with a load that was a lot heavier than if I would have just let go. Jesus told him, come with me. I'll show you what's possible. But until you can release that, what you thought is the answer to every equation that has gotten you absolutely nowhere. Just because you can produce a reaction doesn't mean you've created a result. Just because you can produce a way forward doesn't mean you have the solution. Just because now you're the one that at least got a college degree, nobody else got that. Well, what do you have? And that's the sad part, is when you can acquire more than anybody before you and still nothing can come out of you. That should be the one determinant that tells you it's not going to be because you acquired something. It's not be because you have a knowledge that nobody else had. It's not going to be because you got farther in life than the ones before you. It's going to be because the result of your life produced a solution for your generation. Because the result of your life produced a solution to your generation. If what comes out of you can only benefit you, know that you have not answered the kingdom of God. Amen. Know that you have not brought forth the kingdom of God. 
So now good isn't good enough. Only that which is born of spirit is allowed around me. And when you can recognize that, the no becomes very valuable to you. God, I know this, this looks kind of like what I asked for. And we're going to talk about how you become real quick before we're kind of out of time, but we're going to talk about that. So let's talk about how you become. How do you become? A person who can become is moldable. Number one is moldable. The Bible makes it very clear. I'm the potter. He's the potter and I'm the clay. He will mold me into whatever he wishes me to be used of. Right? That's his decision. A moldable person is not just obedient. A moldable person is transformed. So now it's not so much the servant to the master. It's the child to the father. And you become a reflection of that which you're birthed from. So God, some of us have have been okay just being a servant. Servant in the house of God. God, whatever you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Without rhyme or reason, you'll just obey. A dog can do that. A robot can do that. It doesn't take a capacity to be that. It just takes a surrendered person. Great. True surrender bears fruit of surrender, which bears transformed heart, transformed mind. The way that you think is different than the people around you. The way that you speak is different from the people around you. How will you be a light in a dark place if all you look like is everything that looks like you? A moldable person is the first part of becoming. You are moldable, moldable by the Spirit of God, that your obedience is predicated by your desire to bear image of him. I don't want to just bear witness of him. Anybody can be a witness. When they send people to the military, it's a very gruesome process to become. Those that are moldable get to stay. Those that are not get discharged and have to go home. What is that movie that you and I watched with Mark Wahlberg not too long ago? Anyways, there's a movie with Mark. I love him. But there's this movie with Mark Wahlberg. And he was a family man. All he knew, all of his family knew, he was a family man. And they didn't know where he'd come from. So he was like an assassin, basically, for the good stuff. But he was an assassin. And he went under a whole other name. And when his family found out about it, they were so shocked. The nature of the man was still there even when the name changed. So this is a revelation that I want to give you. Just because you think, I just need to change my name, then everything about me will change, is a lie. Because the outward is a reflection of what first begun inward. So if nothing took place inwardly, then anything you do outside is just a front, which is the reality. Okay, I'm going to change my name, then everything about me is changed. By what revelation did you change your name, and by what transformation did you change your name? God gave you a new man, right? He made you a new creation. He made you by his image and likeness. So now the things outside of you are only a reflection of what has first happened in you. So then when they found out he had had all these other names, a criminal can do that. You can change your name a million times to conceal what you have done, but you will always find its way back to where it started. Because nothing about you changed. A moldable person is not just an outward appearance. I've changed the way I dress, or I've changed the way I talk, or I've even changed the people I've hung around. A moldable person is a reflection of what happened inside that was very difficult for you to let go of, even that which you had called good. God, even my desire has changed. Have you ever met somebody that when they came into an encounter with God, the things that they wanted over time, that had been so indwelt that this is my pursuit, all of a sudden it has no hold over them. God, I don't want anything but what you want. But it's not because God is not giving you your desires. It's because your desires have been transformed. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Meaning that there are desires that have been hidden inside of you that can only be revealed by his spirit. So everything else that has stacked itself on top of it has delusion. It became a delusion to you that that's what you wanted. 
but it was what you wanted at a version and at a stage of yourself that didn't know or encounter God for who he truly is inside of you. So now my desire changed because my image has been conformed. You're moldable. So you're no longer even trying to conceal those things that you have experienced over time because that becomes testimony for all those around you. But you're not labeling yourself or attaching yourself to the power that it once had over you. When he who knew no sin became sin so that we could overcome it, you're no longer ashamed of the things you used to do or the places you used to be or the things that you used to want. Now you can tell somebody, I used to want pornography, but God has changed me. I no longer desire it. Or I used to want the lust of everything that I saw, but I don't want it anymore. It's a real change of self into the image of Christ that no one can front you on. Because that image will be tested. Do you really want what you say? Are you who you really say you are? You're moldable. The first way for you to become is to be moldable. Number two, somebody who is moldable has now become consumed by the purpose of God. Jesus, in all of his days walking, had to be where God wanted him to be, had to do what God wanted him to do, wouldn't associate even with his mother and father because his mother and father are them that do the will of the one who sent him. There was no attachment greater than that which God had created him for. Your prayers even change. The Bible says we don't know what to pray, but the Spirit gives us utterance, meaning even that which you are praying for has to be directed by the Spirit of God within you. You become even with your prayer. God, am I too busy praying for what I want? Or am I consumed by you so much that I only can speak what you have in mind? It's not wrong to pray for the house or to desire the house or the car or whatever. God will give you those things. It is his desire that you live a very full and abundant life. But if that is the focus, then your pursuit is yourself and not that which he is concerned with. I am so consumed with the purpose of God for me that anything outside of that, I can't even think about. When somebody comes at you with some nonsense, when you're triggered and focused on that which is important to you or that which God has called you to, those things just fall off to the side. You'll know when your mental capacity can't engage with what it once could. Oh, somebody said such and such about me, or this is the new, newest T that's hitting the block, or your ears are inclined to find those things. God, I'm ready to hear about what you have in store. Lord, all those things that I once gave my ear to, I don't want them anymore. Oh, somebody comes with you with some nonsense? No, I don't have time for that. Literally, you don't have time for that. Imagine if your one minute is like the thousand years or your one day is like the thousand years. How many days have you given over to things that God has not been in? That now we are asking and repenting that God redeem the time that we have lost so that we can come back into alignment with that which he has desired us to focus on. Each and every one of you in this room has been given a purpose so grand, a call so deep. But because life hasn't amounted to what you hoped for, you've given up. Or maybe you've never known. You've been so consumed with everything around you, the cursed ground around you, that you've been a product to your environment. That all that comes out of you is that which you can see from. Lord, I need a lens that comes from your spirit. So that even when I'm in prayer, that I am so consumed with your will, with your voice, with your inclining of me in your presence, that I don't waste away in prayer, that I don't pray amiss. So the child of God that is becoming is number one, multiple, and number one, consumed with the purpose of God. And that will make itself manifest through every spiritual practice that you go through. 
Your fasting is consumed by it. Your prayer is consumed by it. Everything that we do that we think pleases God without his instruction has become an enmity to him. And we don't want to believe that because it's what God calls us to do. God, you told me to feed the poor, and you told me to pray, and you told me to fast. But at what foundation are all of those things being sent out to do? That determines whether you are living according to the will of God or you've wasted your time in good deeds that are never going to be recognized by him. Number three, while we finish. Those that have become are reliant on God. Completely reliant on God. And that reliance looks like, God, I know I can't without you. I have not without you. I am not without you. I can't step on this stage without him. I can't speak a word without him. I don't care how long I've studied. And the Lord knows, Prophet Lovi and I have become kind of an anomaly to many because people that come and want to give the word of God and you take it seriously and there's nothing wrong with it, a lot of us spend time studying it. And not living in it. When you live in the word of God, when the word of God has been able to mold you, when the instruction, when the promise of God has been able to mold you, everything you do for him, for him will, because, will be because it's from him. The source of it. Where is the source of your water? Because I can give you something to drink and it will leave you thirsty. It's the difference between offering somebody a Coke when they're thirsty and offering someone water. Anybody who knows is when you drink Coke, you become thirstier because of the sugars, because all the things inside of it. It doesn't quench your thirst. It makes it worse. Somebody who feeds or serves from that place or performs from that place, you'll realize your well is simply a pond. There's no depth to what you have to offer the people of God. And the result of it will show that they have not been transformed in any way or drawn any nearer to him. I am on my face every single time God gives me an opportunity. My day begins on my face. Because, God, I'm not waiting for the stage for you to make yourself known. I'm not waiting for the opportunity to go preach in front of your people, though I take this with great honor and humility. But I sure as heck am not walking out of that door unless God himself has sent me. We can declare and speak a good word, and it'll leave you exactly the way that you came. Or I can surrender my spirit to the spirit of God, so that everything that is birthed out of the well of him in me is a reflection of transforming power that will leave every heart, every mind, every soul in this room better because he touched it. So whatever sphere of influence God has given you, surrender that sphere of influence to his spirit within you. God, I'm, I'm just a teacher, or I'm just a mailman, or I'm just a doctor. To the glory of God, you are. To the glory of God, you are. That everything he lets your hand touch has the transforming effect of his spirit. In power, in deliverance, in freedom, in healing, in all that we want to produce of God, let it be first be found because we are in God. That God, I don't want what you can give me or what you can do through me without you being seen in me. When that image becomes the only image you desire to make known, there's no way you can be cursed. There's no way you can live under a curse. So it's great, we want to pray the curse and we want to declare that the curse is broken. All good and well, as long as you know that your position has to change. That where you stand has to change. That your guard has to change. 
Nothing will be able to get past you. Nothing will be able to overcome you. And I'm not saying that because that is a wishful think I have for you. I'm decreeing the promise of God over your life, even in the place where you haven't been able to witness it, so that you can rise up to the level of revelation that God has imparted you today and be able to live and surrender to that spirit. You want to be great in the kingdom of God? Make yourself in him so hidden. That Lord, until you desire to make, and this is the thing, if, if you're just looking for me, I might look cool or I might dress well or I might have something that you desire and maybe you want counsel on how to get there. But make your desire to know the Jesus that is inside of someone so that he who is the foundation of every good and perfect gift that is added unto anybody that you have laid your eyes on or any success that you aspire to achieve, that it is first and only founded because Jesus has been your innermost desire. That he is the only reason that you wake up in the morning, the only reason you keep on going, the only reason you haven't given up is because you've held on to the hope of glory that will never fail or forsake you. When the purpose of your life is driven from that place, I promise you'll never run out of gas. Never. Never. Nothing will ever be able to take strength from you. Because the strength that is given to you that you can truly operate from is a strength that cannot be revoked by a man. The well I tap into is not a well you can steal from. It's only when I rely on myself, only when I depend on myself, and the more you know, it becomes a greater hindrance to many because now you have to check yourself. Am I relying on a knowledge I've acquired? Am I relying on a wisdom that I think is his? Or have I surrendered myself to know nothing before him so that he can add to me everything that I need of him? That is the strength of your youth. You will never be old when you are found in the spirit of God. You will never be without ability when you are, some of your best years are gonna be found in the years that everybody said it's time to tap out and retire. So I'm talking to all the people in here that you have given up on what the world has said, turn it in. You've come into agreement with a limitation the world has, but the spirit doesn't. That from today, I don't operate by that knowledge. I don't operate by that fact. That every woman, that even in your childbearing, I can't wait to hear the testimony of the pregnant woman that came and gave birth without a pain. And you know what was crazy in that book that I thought was so fascinating? Listen to this. It's called labor pain, isn't it? They call it labor pain. She asked the Holy Spirit, but God, I, I believe with this promise that you've laid out in your word, this is just a small example. We can find a million others, but we're a room full of women, so it's relevant. He says, she said, Lord, I don't want to call it a labor pain because the choice of your word is the invite of what you're going to define your situation by. Right. I don't want to call it a labor pain. And he told the woman, take your muscle. And I want everybody to do this. Just take your arm out and flex your muscle as hard as you can. He said, what is that? He goes, she goes, it's a contraction. He said, does it hurt? She said, no. He said, that is what you can experience by giving birth to a child. Amen. To the world, it's like you've lost your mind. <laughs> but it is a contraction. If you do that with your muscle as hard as you can, it doesn't hurt. It's effort, but it's not impossible, and it's not breeding any pain. What happens when you can walk through exactly what the world is walking through with a different lens? So now what affected the world like everybody else doesn't affect you as his child. Why? Because he gave you a different way to see it. He gave you a different way to walk through it. He gave you a different manner in which you operate in it. Life is happening to every single human being because we are that human. But the way in which life happens is determined on if you're sitting on the ground of the curse or you're standing upon the rock of the blessing. And from today, I want you to, this is it, stand up, we're finished now. I want you to turn everybody in your Bibles to Galatians 4. Galatians 4, 28. Amen. 
And this will begin our prayer for tonight. From today, every way in which you've walked through the very mundane and common situations of man will have a different lens, will have a different perspective, will hold a different ability. Because you're no longer tapping into the natural man any longer. Not by our flesh. The Bible says it, not by strength, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. How your life has been going will determine because of where you have been living it by. Have I been living it by my strength or my power or my might? Because the ability of the spirit holds another dimension of access to that which God has made available than any part of our human man could. Any part of our soul or our natural mind could comprehend. Those things which are impossible to man made possible with God are only a reflection by those that make the image of God the forerunner of their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are y'all there at Galatians 4.28? Yeah. Yeah. This will be the basis of our first prayer tonight. Amen. Can we read it together? Yeah. One, two, three. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are children of promise. I need you to read it again, but put it in your chest because it's speaking to you. Amen. One, two, three. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. From today, you are making that decision. I will no longer normalize the curse. I am a child of the promise. I am a product of the promise. I am a conduit of the blessing. There is nothing about me that resonates with the curse that God has set me free from. Amen. When that becomes your conviction, church, I promise every single thing about you has to come in line. Amen. Like a soldier in the army is the child of God to his command. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine if we all got in line and we were all just following the Lord one by one by one like ants in a row cannot be shaken. But imagine you're in the middle of the line and you decide I'm going to step out. Who's going to be affected? Not just you. Every single person that was following you is affected also. It's a price too great for you to bear from today. God, I can't walk in the curse any longer. I can't walk in the mentality of the curse, of the limitation of the curse, of the provision of the curse, of the success or the failure of the curse. There are too many attached to me that I can't but let you know that unless you follow me as I follow Jesus, Please don't look at Maggie. Please don't look at Maggie. Follow me as I follow Christ. And me is Christ within me. That's the only image I desire to bear. Will I let you down? Absolutely. Will your prophet let you down? Absolutely. But it'll be a testament that you have put your hope in a place where it does not belong. And God will allow you to feel that sometimes so that you know Stop idolizing a man. Yes. Stop pedestaling a man. Yes, Stop raising up a man. Yes, Raise up and honor the God inside of that man who yes. cannot fail you, cannot forsake you. And if you cannot recognize him in the least of those around you, do not ask for him to put you in the greatest servant that he sent to this generation. God, help me to recognize that I'm a child of the promise from today. Help me to recognize that I'm a child of the blessing from today. As you promised Isaac, as you gave us Abraham, as you made him the father of many nations, that I would live by that inheritance. I want you to lift your voices and just declare yourself, I am a child of the promise. From today, my health is a child of the promise. I am a child. My family is a child of the promise. Lift up your voices.
is a blessing. My life is a blessing. My mind is a blessing. My mind is a blessing. To all those who come in contact with me. All those who come in contact with me. They shall be a product of the blessing that you've made me. They shall be a product of the blessing that you made me. Begin to declare every area of your life is a blessing to those connected to you.
out to? Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? I'm speaking prophetically to some of you tonight, and I know exactly who I'm talking to, but I'm not going to point you out. You have reached great successes in your career in music. You have reached great successes in your career in music. You worked very hard to get to the height that you found, and yet nothing is moving. There's a stagnancy that has surrounded you, but God has led me to tell you, stop relying on the gift that he gave you. Tap into the spirit which he is living inside of you and watch the heights that no man could have elevated you to. You know who I'm talking to. You know who I'm talking to. This is a story for many people. You've reached very high successes in your life. And even for those that you have seen the lowest of lows and think there is no redemption to be found for you. That God is speaking to you in this moment right now for you to come up to the level in which he lives. For you to come up to the place in which he's kept you. That your mind will now elevate, that your spirit will now rise up to the spirit of God. That that place where he just positioned you in heavenly places is not so that you can see everybody below you. So that everything about you reflects the place that he's positioned you. There's things that are touching the top that nobody in the bottom can see. There's things that are accessible from the top that nothing beneath them can touch. Some of you have been living below what God has been able to do for you. But living below the standard of the blessing that God has set you upon. Stand on your tower. From today, decide that I'm not going to prove myself by why, by how much I can accomplish or what I can prove to people or how great my voice is or how much my gift has made room for me. That God, I'm positioned by and only and through your spirit. That now I'm not crediting myself for anything that you can do. I'm not denying anything that you could or could not do. There is no limitation to God the second you take it off of him. He's able to show you what his capacity truly is in your life. Some of you have been living at a lower capacity, have not emptied yourself and made room for the blessing of God to make itself known to you. But God wants an image bearer from today. God doesn't want the nice voice to lead you inside of the room. He wants his spirit to do so. So you know who I'm talking to. From today, let your testimony change. Music is your biggest desire, your biggest passion. And you know God sent you to that industry. Stop letting your gift lead you in. Start allowing the spirit of God which was placed within you so that that gift could thrive to be the leader into every single interaction you have from today. God won't deny your talent. People can acknowledge your talent, can, can award your gift, but God breeds a reward that no man could have given you, an eternal reward that you didn't just please the ones around you, that you pleased the one who sent you. That what I came to accomplish was not so that I could be applauded, but that the King of glory who sits high above all principality and power could show himself faithful where all glory, honor, and dominion has been given. And where he sits there too shall I. What he says that too shall I say. That which he speaks should be the only word that I utter. And that I've made my ear so available to him that all that I hear is the promise of God over me, over those around me, that when people come into contact with me, they come into contact with life itself. Not a life that can be taken and given, but a life that no matter what is taken, God still remains sovereign over all. And the life that he came to give me is not gonna be measured by the success or failure that my life has shown me. It's a different confidence that you carry an unshakable peace, a triumphant hope that in spite of all, my God has been good to me. 
that even though that marriage didn't work out, my God has been good to me and I will no longer deny what God can do with my failure, what God can do with my success. But I'll fail to credit anybody or anything about me but the Spirit of God himself. From today, when you can give credit where credit is due, where it belongs, where it has been rooted from, God will make sure the roots run deep and strong and he'll let the wind blow and he'll let things fade all around you and you're still as bright as you've ever been. I look forward to the testimonies of this house that breed fruit for those that are connected to this house, to a world that is dying to know that you are a child of the promise of God that no one can snatch you from his loving hand. God will strong arm any enemy against your soul. Just let him. Let him. Let him talk about you. Let him put you down. Let him deny you. Let him say you're not the one for the job. Let the devil try and convince you that you're not the wife that God sent him. That you're not good enough anymore. That God will raise a standard against every lie of the enemy simply because you stand on the ground of the promise. You're not a product of the environment of the curse. That you are a solution to the curses around you. You are a solution to those that are finding hopelessness and you give them life again. What if you are that bearer? What if you are that bearer? You're not just a bearer of good news, you're a bearer of the good news. So as we're finishing, I just want us to keep, I want us to just sing that line. You are more than able, who am I to deny what the Lord can do. And I want you to look at yourself, picture yourself in front of the mirror. Talk to yourself as the first witness of that image bearer. I'm not looking for some God to send me somebody lowly. I'm looking at myself as the first one that needs to carry it. The first one, because you can't give what you don't have. You can't produce what you're not made of. So who are you to deny what the Lord can do? He is more than able, more than faithful over every circumstance, over every limitation. Poverty has no hold. Sickness has no hold. The curse has no hold. The product of the curse has no hold. From today, you are an image bearer of the promise of God. Can we do that? Can we just lift our hands? Can we just sing that together? Lift your voices with all your heart. Sing it.
becomes not just the word of your mouth, but the meditation of your heart. Everything about you follows suit. Don't be a Christian that just declares. Don't be a believer that just decrees. But from that inward man, let everything that you speak be the conviction of your spirit. Everything about your life from today in that conviction, by that conviction alone, will begin to know the blessing of God for you. God, strike me if I'm lying. That which is bred out of conviction, whether of the curse or of the blessing, will bear its fruit. From today, you get to decide. My mouth has uttered there's nothing that God can't do. My life has now come into alignment that I'm a child of the blessing. Don't you dare utter a word you don't mean. The second that your word, that your word is released into the realm of man, where the devil himself has been given jurisdiction, you will be tested, you will be tried. But when it comes from the conviction of the spirit, you don't care who says what or what happens around you. My life is the conviction that I am the blessed of God. My life has the conviction that there's nothing that my God can't do. So now when he moves on behalf of every area about you, don't you dare be surprised. Don't you dare be surprised. He's a man of his word. He is the God of his word. He doesn't lie to you. And if I be sent of him, I haven't either. Everything in your life is changing from today. I declare that over each and every one of you. Simply because your convictions have changed. But I want you to be honest. If there's anyone in this room, we're just going to, as they lift their hands, we're going to attach our faith to theirs. In your heart, you said, I don't know if I can live like that. I still doubt and I still fear that those things which have followed me still have power over me. If that's you, I just want you to honestly lift your hands because the de God can't deliver you from your friend. We've made the enemy the enemy. And every lie that he has placed within you, God is overcome. You see these hands lifted. Lift them high. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Lift them high. Your lifting of your hands is an act of surrender. God, transform the way that I think. Mold the way that I move. And each, every woman, if you're standing beside that woman, I just want you to put your hand on them. I just want to let you to lay their hand on them. And all of you that are around, stretch your hands towards them. Stretch your hands towards them. You're saying, I don't know if I believe that. I honestly have seen too much that God needs to undo. But God won't undo your situation. He'll undo the man that you are that allowed that situation to prevail. Whoever you are, and don't be ashamed. Please don't put your faith where you don't have it. If you are that woman and you say, I, I still, I don't know if I believe. This felt good and I know I needed that charge, but I'm not sure it's the conviction I have yet. Every arm in this room, I want you stretched towards them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the honesty of the heart that is longing to be touched of you. And we thank you that you are imparting a supernatural conviction inside of them right now. That, Lord, you can transform a mind in a moment's notice that has been surrendered to you. That, Father, we're giving you what we don't know. We're giving you what we don't even know we have to give you. And saying, have your way inside of my heart. Have your way inside of my mind. Make me a transformed man by a renewed spirit. 
renew a right spirit in me from today and let that spirit, your spirit, lead me forward from today. Every doubt be eliminated. Every fear be eliminated. God is not afraid of those things you are not sure of because that which you are lacking, he is sure of. So Father, today give us your confidence. Give us your conviction. And Lord, may the words that we read every day in this text not just be words that we read that sit on these pages, but words that come alive and strengthen themselves in every area of our lives. Father, for some it might be healing. For others it might be deliverance. For others it might be marriage and relationship issues. Father, whatever that need is today, that we all have need of you for. We thank you, Lord, for that need that keeps us running back to you, Lord God. And we thank you for our sister who is being revived from the spirit, who's being revived from the spirit that she no longer relies on herself anymore. But Father, she lives by the infinite ability and access she's been given by you, to you. Every spirit of heaviness lift in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every hold over their mind lift from today in the name of Jesus. We break every stronghold, every dominion, every power from today in the name of Jesus. You have no hold over this, your child. These are the children of the blessing. These are the sons of God with groanings to be renewed, to be restored, and to be revealed. Father, show yourself faithful amongst us. Where there be sickness, let there be healing. Where there be bondage, let there be the liberation of your Holy Spirit. We curse every curse. Every enemy of their souls, we damn them to where they belong. They have no control, no power, no dominion. From today in the name of Jesus, from today in the name of Jesus, we loose them now in the name of Jesus. We loose them now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You know what the greatest thing of being a believer? One of the great benefits is that you know that there are those that whose faith that you can connect to. Those that will show you who you really are when you need it most. A true friend shows you Jesus. A true friend points you back to Jesus. You're not going to be able to come to me with your problems and I'm going to let you wallow in them. We can acknowledge the pain, the sorrow, the emotion that that which has been difficult for us to travail over has been. But we serve a hope of glory that in the face of and in spite of that there is a spirit that has been given us access that has given us divine access with supernatural strength, with divine ability, with answers that no man could have given you. So no matter what that sickness is, no matter how long it's been in the family, no matter what that limitation has been, from today you live above it. From today, I live above it. Speak to your own soul. Sometimes you need that. Remind yourself, I don't live by what I feel. I don't live by what I see. I don't live by what's hurt me or who's hurt me. But I live by the supernatural ability of the grace of the Spirit of God within me that no trouble, no sickness, no poverty, no damnation, no demon in the pits of hell could prevail over me. I am a child of the blessing.
Can we say that together? I am a child of the blessing. I am a child of the blessing. It helps when you're, you know better than you've been shown. Because if I know that all things are working together for my good, I'm waiting for the worst of it to rise up and still it falls to his goodness. Hallelujah. 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 Who's traveled from out of state to be here? Out of state only. I'm sorry, I got a lot of messages from people that stayed last week to try and be for daughters, but you didn't get to come. If you traveled out of state to be here, we just want you to come forward. Evangelist Benny and Prophetess Ashley are gonna pray for you. Out of state, out of state, out of state. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Clap for them as they go and sit. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I promise you, a hand doesn't need to be laid on you for the blessing of God to come upon you. Trust me, everything that the Lord had for you, you've received it tonight. Hallelujah. 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 You guys make sure that you um, uh, take those newspapers home. Every month I uh, try to make them as special as possible that you have something to hold on to for the month. There's a meditation in there. There's a really yummy recipe in there this month. There's a lot of just little things, but also uh, divine things that the Lord has instructed me to give you. So I hope you enjoy those. And we have daughters next month. It'll be extra special. I won't ruin the surprise yet. But you want to make sure that you invite people that need to see God in a way that maybe they haven't or experience God in a way they never have. This is a church that welcomes all people. We welcome all people knowing that the love of Jesus will transform everything about them that doesn't please him. But that the love that ushers them in will be the love that keeps them for eternity. Amen. Amen. Grab what you want to give to God as we finish. Grab what you want to give to God. Thank you, Jesus. Lift what you have to give to God. Oh, and we have new merch. I made some for Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's, all you lovers and friends out here. But we have a special one. Who has it? Oh, you can, here, come show me. This one right here, she bought it already. Good for you, boo. They go fast, and I'm changing the design up. I know it's been popular, but I'm tired of seeing it. So here's the new design for this month, this color combo. All the love, all the red, our beautiful model. I only made a limited quantity, but they're out there in the foyer, so if you want to get one, pick it up. Amen. Grab what you want to give to God, lift it up. And when you come to give, give with rejoicing. You can't outgive the goodness of God. You can't outgive the giver of who gave you what you have to give. Father, we thank you for both the gift and the giver. And we thank you, Lord, for those that 
want to be a sower. You said you give seed to the sower, meaning that it is a decision we make even before anything is in our hands. That, Father, nothing is too great or too small. That everything done out of sacrifice, out of love, and out of genuine conviction, that, Father, you honor it. And I thank you, Lord, for every woman that is positioned in here and all that she represents and all whom she represents. Father, may her sacrifice speak for her even when her words could never utter it. Father, may the cries and the deepest longings of her heart be answered by your love and in your presence, God. And in this giving, we tell you that there is nothing that has a hold on us like you. That there is nothing that we value more than your spirit with us. So, Father, we give willingly, not grudgingly. We give gratefully and thankfully, knowing that you multiply everything we entrust to you. Father, multiply their lives. Multiply their families. Multiply their death, their wealth, their health, everything to do with them, Lord. And may the things of darkness be so far from them because they are kept in your hands. Until we meet again, Father, keep them as we go. Keep them until we return together again. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Daughters, what a mighty, powerful word tonight. That we are the blessing. Um, I know we want our flowers, so please, if um, you come and get the flowers, be careful because there are thorns. So let's respect the altar, the time of giving. We thank God for this altar. So once everyone's finished giving, you may get your flowers. We once again be very careful. Um, as we leave, you know, we have daughters every first Tuesday of the month. Um, doors open at 7, star starts at 7.30. Please go rewatch this. It was a powerful message that we are not, you know, under the curse, that we are the blessing. So everything that comes from us is the product of the blessing, whether it be our children, our family, our ministry, anything that's connected to us. So until we meet again, be blessed. We love you. Revelation worship is called Love Don't Stop. Let's go. Here we go. Yeah.